Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to today's LinkedIn Live. My name is Brian Blaylock. I'm the Director of Client Development here at Blue Grace, and I'll be your host today. Our topic is Floral Logistics, Overcoming the Thorny Path to Blossoming Success. I can't believe I got all that out. Uh, I am very <laughs> excited today to be joined by my good friend and our Senior Manager of Specialized Services, uh, who will be our subject matter expert today, and that's Will Baker. Will, thank you so much for being here with us. Man, thank you for having me, Brian. What a great name for uh, for this segment here. Uh, like Brian said, my name is Will Baker, uh, Senior Manager of the Specialized Services Team here at Blue Grace Logistics. Uh, I've actually been in the industry for about 20 years with a specific focus on floral produce and, and protein shipments. Uh, so excited to talk to you today about the upcoming flower season, especially Valentine's Day, which is right around the corner. I love it. Well, let's let's just jump right in, Will. So, you know, I know in the world of fresh shipping, everything has a peak season. So I wanted to start by, by asking, is there a defined season for floral shipping? And kind of tell us what that is. Good question. I, I mean, flowers are shipped year round. Uh, there are multiple holidays that we really do focus on, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day being the most prominent in our space. I, I will say it does, uh, you know, depend on, you know, the specific vendor. Uh, I think all fresh cut floral vendors are looking at Valentine's Day and Mother's Day as being one of their biggest holidays. Uh, but we deal with a couple where the Rose Bowl, for, for, uh, Rose Bowl, for example, uh, is actually the largest holiday and the biggest rush for them. So, Wow. Okay. Well, listen, uh, you know, there's, I know there's challenges in floral shipping like there are in everything else, to be fair. <laughs> But how do they differ from other sensitive freight, like you know traditional produce? How how are those those challenges different? Yeah, I mean traditional produce and floral shipping uh, are are a lot alike in many ways, right? Uh, risk mitigation for both these commodities is essential for a successful holiday pull. Uh, so knowing that shipping delays are going to occur, uh, aligning with qualified capacity that is knowledgeable about the commodities that they haul. And being on top of the front end dispatching process can ensure more loads are delivered clean and in good condition without delay. So those are there, there's a lot of similarities, but I would say the biggest difference between them both is is the the fact that the uh, floor, flowers are are a non uh, USDA graded commodity. So the secondary market value of these items is very low, right? So. Here at Blue Gray Specialized Services, we, we do a lot to address that risk on the front end, right? So even before that carrier goes and picks up the load and, and gets in transit, uh, we're, we're assuring that we're aligning with the right capacity. Uh, and uh, those steps are, are helping us get more loads delivered in good condition on time. Uh, and I feel that's why clients use our services and, and you know, no one likes claims at the end of the day. So we, we happen to deliver more freight clean uh, than I feel our competition does. So. There's no truer statement that's ever been made in one of these sessions is <laughs> no one likes claims, right? So No one uh, likes claims. Absolutely. So, you know, we talked about those challenges. We talked about some of the differentiators uh, for you and your team. But, you know, how do you how do you prepare in advance to overcome these obstacles, these challenges that we deal with? Well, well, for holiday pulls, and I mean, it does happen for, uh, uh, you know, outside of the season, right? Uh, there's three things that we focus on, which is happens to be more on the front end of that process, okay? So we're going to align upcoming volumes with our dedicated capacity team. Uh, we have a 24-7 specialized account management and ops team that, that we, we go through our execution process once again, uh, know that everybody is prepared to dot the I's and cross the T's. Uh, and then we also have a staging area that kind of helps hold this all together, right? And I'll kind of break down each one, right? So uh, by aligning upcoming volumes with our dedicated capacity team, we're starting to assign that, that those lanes out weeks in advance, right? Uh, we're trying to identify the gap between our regular capacity uh, that hauls the, these, the, these loads each and every week to what are we going to have to go out and find in the marketplace? Uh, some vendors' volumes can increase 20 to 50% in, in these times, right? Uh, and we want to make sure that we have the qualified capacity there to haul that freight. Um, and then we go through with each of our carriers and, and ensure that the carriers and drivers are aware of the execution expectations, right? Where is the staging area? Where are they going to, to meet us first in this process? Uh, the 24-7 specialized account management and operations team is kind of essential to holding this all together. 
Uh, we're staffed 24-7, 365. Uh, and it is staff with industry, industry professionals that actually know the commodities that we're hauling and understand best business practices. We're ready to report any delays, dispatch the drivers direct, which is very important, right? Uh, you don't wanna go through a dispatcher to dispatch a driver. So we take that process on entirely, okay? Uh, and in worst case, uh, you know, if they do get to the staging area, we can have a recovery solution there in a split second. And then the staging area, uh, it's a place for drivers to wait. Uh, you know, vendors in South Florida have space issues uh, a lot. A lot of trucks and trailers will be lined up on the street, which can cause congestion, police being called, that sort of thing. Uh, so we take the extra time to, to set up that staging area. It's also a place for drivers, trailers to be, uh, to be inspected, right? Um, we're going to check the chute. We're going to check the unit and make a visual inspection of the tires and outside of the trailer to avoid any capacity issues in transit. Right. We just, we're, we're going that extra step to make sure, uh, you know, these small anthills don't turn into mountains. Yeah. And then last, uh, we will get a trailer repaired prior to the truck ever getting to the shipper. Uh, to, the amount of holes in chutes, a hanging chute, not correctly attached to the blower. Those are huge issues that can cause claims. Uh, and those things we'll, we'll address before that truck even loads our flowers. That's awesome. Well, listen, I, I, I like my uh, my wife's flowers being in your hands. I feel a little bit better about that. So Yeah, and yeah. you want them to last in the vase a long time, right? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. If you align with us, uh, we're, we're going to extend that floral vase life, no doubt about it. I love it. I love it. You know, Will, we talked about the seasons for floral shipping. I want to kind of switch gears a little bit, but but similar. I mean, are there are there trends that drive some of this? I know uh, there you know there's different trends of products that become popular, exciting based on what's going on in the industry. Does floral have its own trends, or is it just pretty much the same consistent footprint year over year? Yeah, believe it or not, Stanley cups are not the only trend, Brian. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I scroll through my my daughter's uh, social media feed and and have noticed uh, that that there definitely is uh, you know uh, a, a lot of young, the younger younger generation that's interested in rare species, orchids, succulents, that sort of thing. Um, overall, I mean that you know the floral markets are pretty cyclical. Excuse me, the peaks and valleys can be planned for in most part. Um, and, and that that really allows us to, to plan for those huge, huge peaks and valleys. But uh, it is kind of interesting uh, seeing a lot of the younger generation, uh, you, you know, uh, increase their their purchases of houseplants. I, I've read a couple of reports where, uh, you know, that those, that millennial generation is buying increased houseplants. So houseplants, succulents, stuff like that. Uh, we have seen increases in sales uh, uh, year over year for the past few years. So. Yeah, I, I listen, you know, I, I have a daughter that's uh, that's in that age group. And I know when she relocated uh, last year from uh, Tampa to Pensacola, she did not manage her logistics on her plants as well as you do. Well, a lot of them didn't survive the trip. So I should have connected you two before that ever happened. Right. So call you know, me next time. Call me. Our drivers I, know what they're doing. And uh, yeah. hey, look, they'll even unload and, and walk your flowers in. If you need. <laughs> I am definitely going to go with the I know a guy <laughs> philosophy next time and, and reach out to you. So okay. with with those the, those trends, well, you know, you and I are, aren't uh, we're certainly not millennials. We're, we're we're just barely past that point, right? So how do you well, stay yeah. on top of those trends? How do how do you stay with it? Um, at, you know, I might look like an old dog, Brian, but uh, you know, I do have <laughs> social media, so I I see reels and stuff. I think that's what they're called. Um, but, uh, it, you know, uh, my marketing team, uh, my marketing team, uh, helps me out tremendously stay ahead of these trends. Um, you know, freight publications, stuff like that, uh, talking with our customers, right. Uh, you know, we have an intimate relationship with all our vendors, uh, and our top clients that are looking for us to haul flowers, uh, understanding their expectations, uh, wh where they're seeing an increase of sales, where they're seeing opportunity, uh, helps us stay, uh, on top of all those trends even some in the in the social media category. Okay, I love it. Uh, you're definitely more uh, more connected to that than I am, so I'm going to lean into you for that part too. Uh, I have figured out how to set the time correctly on my phone, so I've made a step forward in, in my development. Uh, Will, uh, if you don't mind, everyone was kind enough to give us their time today, and, and before everyone leaves us, would you mind sharing with listeners any just last advice that'll make sure that we get the best possible product delivered to the customer, my wife? How do we get it there? How do we make sure it works right? 
Well, one, use Blue Grace Logistics Specialized Services. Uh, you know, I, I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but I, I think we know what we're doing. Uh, number two, nobody on this call forget to go out and buy their, their wife or girlfriend some flowers this holiday season. Uh, you, you know, it's a, a, a beautiful thought, you know, even if it's not Valentine's Day or Mother's Day, go, go pick some up just because you love your loved ones. And uh, uh, let, let's see some increase in floral here in the years to come. Um, but, uh, you know, seriously, align with a transportation company uh, that has the knowledge and the team to ensure your flowers get delivered clean, right? Uh, at the end of the day, nobody wants to deal with claims. Uh, the secondary market on flowers is, is minimal. They're pennies on the dollar. So if your load gets rejected, you're looking at a huge issue. So um, I know I'm going to go out, buy some flowers, and I got a lot to do here in the coming weeks uh, uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, so, uh, so hopefully I'll get back, back out there, get to work and, and make sure, uh, uh, we make all the moms and girlfriends and wives happy. I love it. Well, listen, thank you listeners for everyone being here today. And, and if you have any questions about not only the floral logistics, but you know, Will's team does a fantastic job on managing temp control freight. I know that's a specialty in the industry that everyone's not good at. So if you need a little bit of help, just reach out to, to Will, reach out to myself, uh, any other questions or anything we can do for you. Thank you so much as always for giving us your time. We'll uh, keep watching out. We should have another of these coming up soon. Another one of these coming up soon. I did the Jeff Foxworthy and combined about 15 words into one there. Uh, we look forward to seeing you, and I thank everyone so much. Will, thank you so much for leading the conversation today. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Brian. Have a good one. You too.